Hello, welcome to Breaking the Cycle to Step Forward podcast. This is episode number 12. And today we'll be talking about the ability to let go. I'm Beverly Webb and I'm joined today with Chris Tuck. Hi, everyone. And as we always remind everybody, this is 30 minutes of authentic conversation from a lived experience and also a professional experience um, via the both of us. So, Chris, this is quite an emotive topic to be talking about. It is. And I'm glad we've rephrased it to say ability to let go, because another word for this, Beverly, isn't it, is forgiveness. And that word riles me. (laughs) Yes, yes. And, And this is where use of language is really important for yourself as well. And being able to check in so you understand, um, you know, forgiveness what it does for you and I will also say that that was a very hard word for me to accept years ago so I don't forgive myself for anything that I've done as a child but for me I've learned to forgive myself as an adult and by another word that I would use because forgiveness I don't always like to use I reframe that as acceptance for who I am and appreciation But what does that allow you to do? So uh, I I hear you're saying, um, as an adult, I forgive myself. What is it you're forgiving yourself? Uh, Well, one of the scenarios that came up in when I was having my first therapy right at the beginning was when I actually, and I've mentioned this before, when I actually found my voice and stopped my dad, who was my abuser, um, it wasn't all fire fireworks and rockets I just said no and he stopped so there was a long long time many years of guilt that I carried around thinking why couldn't I say no when I was younger Mm. whereas now I'm able to forgive myself and say you know what well done for what you did you found the courage but I still don't see that as a a reason that you need to forgive yourself because you shouldn't have had to forgive yourself for anything because it wasn't you that caused the issue in the problem. You didn't abuse yourself. Someone abused you. So why is it that you have to forgive? Um, because some people listening to this are going to really struggle absolutely. to understand this. And this is why we're having the conversation. Absolutely. And again, we had all questions scripted down and we've gone off script which is fantastic because it's authentic it comes from the heart and as you say there are people listening so please you know for anyone listening we are speaking from both sides you are so right it was not my fault however that doesn't mean to say as a a child or young person I didn't take it on as my fault because I did right I I I you know, carried that guilt and shame for so long. So I kept thinking if I'd done this or if I'd done that, it's a bit like when I, you know, when our parents separate or they have a row. If you don't, as a child, understand what's happening, you start to think, oh, maybe that was my fault. We internalise it and blame ourselves. If only I'd have been good when I came home from school, maybe they wouldn't have rowed. But why do you need to forgive yourself for that? I I still don't. For me, yeah, that's what I'm saying. So for me, because I carried guilt about the abuse, I then felt that I had to be the perfect person and doing everything perfectly. So anyone watching today will see I haven't got makeup on. And there was just a minute before I started that I thought, oh, I've got no makeup on. And I thought, no. This is authentic. I'm turning up for me. And actually, I didn't want to wear makeup today. So this is where I give myself forgiveness or acceptance because I am being me. I'm forgiving myself for not having to be perfect, that even if I do something a bit wrong, that doesn't mean to say somebody has the right to abuse me in any way, shape or form. I'm a human being. So... The use of the language, so the word forgiveness, we should, as individuals, substitute it out and maybe use the phrase having the ability to let go of or 
um, grieving for the loss of. Um, so interchange it with something else, but ultimately it is um, just a phrase, a word where it enables you to become unstuck and move on. Is that what you're saying? Yes, well, for me, yes, because this is what we're talking about, what's right for each person. So for me, for a long, long time, I couldn't let go. That why me? Why me? And I, and I remember going through therapy and getting stuck in that. And even going through therapy years later, because let's be honest, we're always touching in. You know, we do that personally anyway, but because of our professionalism. Um, but it took me a long time to actually realise it's not about why me? and it's and all the time I was saying why me I was really stuck in it and I couldn't just let go of it and I'm not saying it happens overnight it really doesn't it's taken a lot of reading I really couldn't understand it it's taken me a lot of anger to get through as well you know feeling that anger you know why me it shouldn't have happened and the thing is, you've got every right to say, why me? Why me? But it's the fact that you got stuck in it, like many people, mm. you've probably all gone through that. Um, you've got stuck in it and and you can't move forward and, until you go, actually, no, this isn't serving me. It could have been anybody, but unfortunately it was me. And just accepting, yes, it did happen. It shouldn't have happened, but... I've got to stop playing that record to myself. I have to just let it be and move forwards. That's what you're saying. Yes, and I remember quite a brutal conversation I had with somebody and they said to me, um, you need to let go of what's going on in your mind. And I was like, sorry. She said, <laughs> you're, holding, yeah. on, you're yeah. holding on to it. And what's happening is you're allowing your dad to continue to control you in your mind yeah and I said what do you mean and she said well you've been afraid of him all these years you've stopped the abuse you know at that time it was 10 years ago and still you're walking around with this fear of him and I won't lie <laughs> I was like who do you think you are yeah. speaking to me yeah. Like <laughs> yeah but you know what I walked away, I thought about it, and I thought, actually, yeah, what do I do? What's my next step? What about you, Chris? Yeah, as you can see, I find this whole subject quite um, triggering and hard to deal with, um, but I, I can touch some of it and understand some of it, and I think yeah. that's just going to have to be the thing for the moment. Absolutely. Um, so for me, um, going through therapy at the moment, as you know, um, working on some really emotional stuff, um, it's about trying to reduce that a, a bit like you really with that woman saying it's having space in your brain and it's controlling your life. And it, it is true. That's what is happening when you're hijacked by that deep, intense emotion about different lived experiences. And for me, it is about, at the moment, what I'm working on is grieving um, the loss of loving, nurturing, protecting caregivers, not necessarily my mum, my dad, as human beings, as people, because they did a lot wrong, but actually gr allowing myself to grieve and letting go of the fact that, um, those people never wore there they're not going to be there um and trying to move forwards with that so it's on a, a level of what you've just shared but it's just um it's it's really difficult yes yeah. how, how do you do it <laughs> how do we do it we, we do it with help we do it with learning we do it by talking um, and little bit by little bit, we we sort of like, don't we? We we do let go. That emotion doesn't have so so much of a hold over us, or what we think doesn't have so much of a hold, and we can gradually just go. You know what? <sighs> that doesn't serve us anymore. Let's move forwards. Yeah, and thank you so much for your honesty there, Chris, because that takes a huge amount of courage 
to be able to share that and be vulnerable in the moment. And I know there'll be some listeners checking in and listening to us who can really see that this is authentic and from the heart. So thank you. And, and thank your body as well for allowing you to be able to grieve because that's the thing we we become so strong in our survival skills we do that without even thinking and it enables us to shut the emotion off at the time to get through it and afterwards yeah. so it's another learning it's it's like oh body I can hear you you know I do feel sad I am able to tap in and I think you know going on from that you go through the abusive situations, don't you? And as you say, you survive. You then, I don't know about you, but I, whenever anyone asks me about my family, I just sort of like shut, shut it down, mm. shut the narrative down. And I just, oh yeah, you know, childhood was fine. Yeah, I just prefer living on my own, laugh it off and just pretend that that, that whole situation um, just doesn't really exist. And then you get through life, don't you? And you've got all of those days that come up, the Christmas, the Easter's, the Mother's Days, the Father's Days, all of that um, that we've talked about before and we'll probably carry on talking about in the future. And you pretend not to be wounded and how deeply it hurts and you don't really um, check in with yourself, um, it, you know, whilst you're blocking it all out. Mm. Um, and then one day, unfortunately this ability to let go does need to happen. Not the forgiveness word for some people, because that just doesn't enter some people's heads, that word, but the grieving, the ability to let go, it has to happen. Otherwise your body will tell you yes. that it's going to happen because we've both had breakdowns, breakthroughs, haven't we? You know, yes. we've discussed and um, yeah, my body is really, it's slowing down. It's getting heavy I'm getting aches, I'm getting pains, I'm, yeah, it's not fun. <laughs> it's not <laughs> no, fun. No, it's not. And yeah. this this is, you're in the middle of the storm. And that's yes. why I'm saying thank you, because that courage to face that rock face, to go into the storm, is immense. Now, this is when I like to look at other sides. This is when, when we're able to do that and let go, you know what is on the other side mm -hmm. it's your own life that is yeah Christy. exactly it's yeah. Beverly it's anybody else who's listening it's their own life enabling yeah. them to have the ability to live their life as they want to and yeah. we've spoken about choice in about second yeah. or third episode but to be able to to feel excited at choices not yeah. through fear because we've got used to being in fear but living yeah. excitement is a different way absolutely and we're entitled to it of course we are and you know when I'm not in the the thick of things so to speak I'm always looking forward planning ahead yeah. wanting to enjoy my life wanting to improve it wanting to learn wanting to grow um but I've always, and like many people, and I think you're the same as me, find it really hard to be still, find it really hard to um, just do nothing, always productive, because that's our coping mechanism. Now, the fact that your body is saying, no, that's not happening. No, you're not doing that. No, you need to sleep. You need to rest. It's so alien. Um, but if you don't take those warnings and do your self-care, like we've spoken about so yeah. many times in every episode, you don't do that self-care, you will end up ill mentally and physically. Absolutely. And your recovery might be a lot longer because you've not listened. Absolutely. So this ability to let go is all of those deep, somatic, subconscious feelings, thoughts, um, that are so deep rooted that they need to be given birth to almost <laughs> yes. give birth to it so that you can move on from it. Yeah. And what I want to do is, you know, just reiterate what you're saying as well. So you're going through some intense therapy at the moment. Yes. You know, and that is challenging. My other challenge is, and we've touched on this before, is I get married next yes. week. Yes. I am really, really, really excited. 
and it's so emotional too yeah and what I've also done I've stepped back from work for the moment for a few weeks that's not to say I'm not doing anything but with my clients I step back from my clients and I find that challenging oh so where I tap into things you know we talk about a toolbox one of the things I do when I tap in sometimes that's the time I pick up a book and think I want to read something I just want to check in with myself and I'm going to share a book that I'm reading that came to me called The Gift Ooh. and it's by a woman she's an amazing woman called Edith Eager and she wrote this book when she was 92 Oh, wow. That's a lifetime of wisdom then. <laughs> yes. And she was a survivor of Auschwitz at the age of 16. Oh, wow. Really? Wow. And okay. what's wonderful is she talks about letting go and yeah. being able to live your own life in different ways. And what I love about it is a really great example about what we've also said about before, that everybody's experiences, regardless what they are, no one has more or less than anyone else. It yeah. is your own story yeah. but when you read this it's it's gives you little things that you can tap into and it's a kind of book that you can read front to back or just open it up in different right. places yeah. and this is where we talk about self-care you know because this is something that's so important so for me at the moment I'm not in therapy but I'm very aware of different things so I've picked that book up so it's called The Gift and it's Edith Eager so you saying about you know your wedding obviously and stepping back but that is a way of managing it's a way of ability to let go ability to respond differently because you're so overwhelmed and it should be a happy um situation and it and it is and it will be yeah um, but to take away some of that other added stress when you don't need it is a way of coping and moving through it um, in a way that is beneficial to you. And I think we've all got to learn to do that. And that's where I, I always use the word balance. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, when I was feeling not balanced, I started to feel overwhelmed yeah. and I reacted to something that really wasn't that big. That was my that was the time that I checked in with myself. Whoa, you what's know, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where's the balance? Yeah. yeah. So that's a word that I use. So, you yeah. know, when we started off, we talk, talked about language. So having the ability to let go it's got such massive connotations yeah absolutely yeah you know so that's what's really good about today you know talking about different words and, and different what beings and even anyone listening now you know when we talk about the ability to let go some people that is very frightening because they've mm -hmm. been holding on so tightly anyway <laughs> to survive yeah to survive and now you're saying what just let go yeah into free fall yeah yeah so and if they haven't got the support around them that free fall can feel really like so daunting yeah massive yeah. so that's when now if we just quickly look at some options available so yeah. for you what would you offer as different ways of support, Chris? What for myself? Yes. Um, keeping up with my routine as much as I possibly can, um, like teaching my classes, etc. Doing the work that I do have to do that's scheduled, but also making sure that I don't overfill my diary and that I put appointments or time breaks in so yeah. that I can rest and do what I need to do to just breathe. Yeah. Calm down, whatever's happening, you know, um, and just give myself a bit of time to adjust to what's going on. Yeah. 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 Good. And that's where, for me, mine is mixed with yoga, yeah. walking, reading and being creative. So getting out my my toolbox, you know, the colouring pens, etc. Colouring, yeah. Yeah. So for yeah. me, it's childlike things and it's important yeah, that I touch in. Yeah, I think it is important. So 
going back to the word forgiveness now obviously there are you can ask two different people and they'll have two different opinions on this yes um some people like you know uh, forgiveness doesn't mean you're forgiving what's been done to you no. forgiving the person who's done stuff mm. stuff to you but it's about um moving on but some people victim survivors absolutely that word triggers them and they absolutely no 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 it's never going to happen and I don't need to forgive someone to be able to move on and I actually agree that you don't need to forgive a certain person mm. to be able to move on but I think you can use that word to mean actually I'm really holding on to something here and it's not serving me so therefore I'm choosing to let that go yes um, and some people would say well that's what I mean by forgiveness well that's fine but language you use that word I'm using this word or this phrase because that's what it means to me absolutely yeah. and, and I think that's really important with language and communication because we all see things in different ways yeah because especially where you know think of something you know if we're all standing in a circle and there's sculpture in, in the middle we're all going to see it from a different viewpoint yeah we will definitely same as language and I remember the anger that I used to carry about my dad like for instance I couldn't listen to a Johnny Cash song because it reminded me too much of my dad however when I was able to let go and grieve etc I could start to see the parts of Jan Johnny Cash that I enjoy and I do enjoy his music and now when I listen to his music that doesn't remind me of my dad I've been able to let go Angled. yeah, yeah. But that didn't happen easily. And I've even been lucky enough to see Johnny Cash in concert. I know some people are going to think I'm weird, but it was brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the film Walk the Line and anything to do with him. So, yeah. It's... But before it was too much tied up and tainted by your lived experiences. Yes. Yeah, yeah. it was too wrapped up and it was a trigger. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. So we've sort of answered all the questions that we come up with, you know, what does it actually mean? How do you do it? We've discussed that and resources available. You shared your book. Um, and I think maybe just having the conversation around it, knowing that people are going to respond to the question in different ways, but that's how I learn or see it from a different viewpoint. So obviously when we've had conversations from it and you've sort of described to me what mm. you understand by it, I'm going, ah, oh, okay, yeah, I, I can actually tune into that. Yes. That's my frequency. I can tune into that. Yeah. I can't tune into that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's good to come back to this several times anyway, because I know that there are some things that I don't hear and accept straight away. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'll yeah. be like, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah yeah got it today yeah <laughs> that's yeah. so normal well yeah. we've tied that up really well in 30 minutes Chrissy which is lovely 30 minutes are so, you sure absolutely it flies really quickly so what's yeah. your last thought on the day um I think that word that begins with f is banned yeah. from my from my own personal language dictionary yes. diary forever yes because even now it still causes me a bit of a reaction here yes. but but the ability to let go I can work with that definitely yes yeah and thank you and my last thoughts is what I love is the fact that we are able to have this conversation be honest truthful and respectful of each yeah, other absolutely. but also keeping our own boundaries yeah so all these different things that we've been talking about, if anybody's listened to a previous podcast and thought, oh, I can't put this all into place. Well, you're actually hearing it in action. So, you are indeed. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much, Chris, for your um, honesty. Thank you to everybody who's listening in and look forward to next week's podcast. We will indeed. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Beverly, for your honesty too. That's what makes our show. Absolutely. Bye, everyone. See Bye. you soon.